This presentation is to understand our minds, okay? And, and when our mind <coughs> goes from good to bad and it's balanced, stuff like that, that's what it's for us to understand. We want to create a more positive culture, right? The culture is the way we feel when we come to school, the way we act at school, our routines, our procedures, our structures, all of that creates our culture here at school. And this presentation is not just for you guys. Because what I'm talking about, the adults in the building do the exact same thing as you guys. So this is for our teachers, for our cooks, for your bus drivers, for the maintenance staff, for myself. So these are not questions I want you to answer. These are questions I want you to think about first. Why do we do advisory every morning? Again, don't answer, just think. Why do we have the champion level indicators every morning from one to five in advisory? Why do we have a family breakfast? Whether you guys realize that or not, that's kind of what we're doing. We're having a family breakfast uh, in advisory. Why do some students walk the hallway? Why do we have calm corners? Some of you have in your classroom. We have them in ISL. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Why do we use this word support? A lot of times, we as adults, we say, hey, we're here to support you guys. And I get the, oh, get away from me. I don't need help. I don't need any support. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Why do we use the phrase MTSS? Maybe you guys have heard that around the building. Okay, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So, some trauma language that we need. All right, there's two key words behind this. All right, regulated and dysregulated. What I want you guys to think about this, everybody knows what a teeter totter is, right? Yeah. You sit on one side, it goes up and down, depending upon uh, the person that is heavier or lighter. Think about your standing in the middle of that, okay? If you are in a balanced state of mind, you're able to deal with the good and the bad. Okay, you're able to adjust to your environment. You're able to adjust to what's going on in your life, at school, with your friends, with your teachers. Uh, if you are dysregulated, that means you can't adjust. That means your tear tars tip to one side. And normally you come in with a very negative attitude. Okay, and then that's when we go up to you and say, hey, how can we help you? How can we support you today? All right, those are two important words. We have them around the hallways. How many, actually outside of your fifth grade classrooms are right by the office. Have you seen those? Raise your hand if you've seen them. Right, those two words are around the school and we'll need to, to know that. Here at Lake Ridge, all right, our definition of discipline is holding you accountable for your actions because ultimately you're the one that chose to do X, Y, Z, whatever it may be but we're gonna find support. Why did it happen? How could we eliminate the problem? What could we have done better? Conflict resolution, you guys have heard that word, okay? So, here's what I call the meat and potatoes of the program. This is the main thing that you guys need to know. Not the dessert, not the appetizer, the main course. We have three brain states. The executive, this is your functioning at a very high level. If you're an athlete, you may play basketball, this is, you're in the zone. You can shoot from anywhere on the court, boom, it's going in. Okay, you are in the zone here when you are in the executive state of mind. Some people tap on their phone, everybody tap on the court. That's, that's your frontal cortex, it's right in the front of your mind. Okay, when you're in this mind state, you're ready to learn. It's key word. You're focusing on a goal, you have a goal, you know where you're going. You're a problem solver. Okay, you just don't walk away from a problem. You problem solve it, you figure out why. You have a calm feeling. But our building, our culture is calm. Everyone has a nice day, all right? This middle one, this is the emotional state. A lot of people, and again, these three states are for you guys, they're for every adult in our building. They're for your parents. We all go through these three states. The emotional one, a lot of people function in the emotional brain state all the time. What I want you to think about this one is, it's a hard drive in your head. It's the way that you 
have been taught you react to situations. For example, you're in the car, you're driving with mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, whatever, and they get cut off. And every four-letter word comes out their mouth and there's hand gestures going out the window. What, what are you gonna do when you get older? Probably the same thing, because that's what you have been taught. That's the hard drive in your mind. If you get yelled at at home, and a teacher raises her voice at you, you're gonna do what you did at home. Does that make sense? Okay. In this state, you talk back, okay? You have an attitude, yelling, name calling, blaming someone else, that's a big one. Right, we, we bring you into the office. Why did you do this? Well, they did, they did, this person, that person. You never take ownership, okay? And this big word right here, connect. That's why we talk so much about advisory and connecting, because if you're in this state, to get to that state, which is where we need you to be, you have to have a connection. Someone has to move you, help you, support you into that other state. The last one here, this is the survival state, all right? This is when something traumatic has happened, okay? Your mind goes from functioning very high to the middle. Now we're at the survival state. Three things happen. Number one, you fight. Ah, you come after somebody because you can't regulate your mind. All right, you can't, that's my mini story. You can't regulate your mind. You are in the survival state. One of those is fight. One of those. No, you don't turn into Captain America. But you defend. You may curl up into a ball. You say, get away. I don't want to deal with this. I'm, ah, okay. And you get into defense mode. All right. The last one. Waving the white flag. You're done, you give up. Mom, I'm fine, I'll go clean my room. And you give up and you do whatever you need to do. Okay? These three states, we all go through. Your teachers sometimes arrive down here. Okay? We have to get everybody functioning up here. This is how our school will be beneficial. This is how you are going to learn when you're functioning in the executive state. So, here's our little scenario. You're nice and calm, you're having a fantastic, does that look like a good day to you guys? Yeah. Right, absolutely. By the way, every day you wake up, every day you wake up should be a good day. You should not carry anything over from the night before. All right, every day should be a good day. Let the past be the past, work on in the future. But, there's times when that storm's gonna come. Here's what you need to know about the storm. The storm can be something at home. The storm can be something at school. The storm can be the person sitting next to you. The storm can be one of your teachers. The storm can be math class. The storm can be English class. The storm could be me. I could be your storm. The bottom line is this, we all have a storm at some point. How do we deal with it? Sometimes, when we're dysregulated and we get to the emotional state, here we go, right? We're yapping at each other, calling each other some names, that's what happens in that emotional state, right? All right? And we get into a verbal disagreement. Sometimes, Beaker takes a left hook to the jaw. This is a survival state now. Here we are. Survival state, right? It happens. Do you have to fight in the survival state? Absolutely not, don't forget. You can curl up, that's the last brain state. You can curl up and defend, or you can wave the flag. Now, what normally happens, what normally happens is we have a situation, we as a school, that's not Superman, that's school, come in and we 
break it up, right? We talk, what happened? What's the conflict? How do you feel? How do you feel? What's going on, right? And we try to repair the relationship. We conflict resolution with you guys, all right? We go through a series of steps, and we do this multiple, multiple, multiple times a day with every conflict that comes up. That's why we talk about the conflict that is so important. And hopefully, by the time that we're done talking, we have conflict resolution. The two of you, we can shake hands, we can give a fist pump, whatever it may be, and we move on. Okay, question. What is the color of the People? I don't know, that's just the slide I got. Um, now, going back to this, and is there any questions about these three brain states before I, I continue so I can answer them? I want you to think questions. Yeah? Um, what about the, like, the part without the room? The, the back part there? The, we're not focused on that part. We're, we're going to let, let that part of the brain be. I want you to think of this as a ladder. We climb up the ladder, we climb down the ladder. I want you to remember, in the survival state, your question is, am I safe? When you get down here, and whether you're fighting, you're hiding, or you're waving the white flag, your question in your mind is, I need to be safe. And if I don't feel safe, one of these things are going to happen. It's our job to make you guys feel safe in those moments, to take you out of the conflict, to have a conversation with you, hopefully fix the conflict. Emotional state is all about, am I loved? Do I have connection? When you're in the emotional state, that's what you need. That's why we preach and preach and preach by having a connection with an adult in the building so they can help you and support you. And the executive state, which is where we need you, everyone to be functioning in, I'm ready to learn. You hear me say that in my morning announcements. Make sure we're ready to learn, make sure we're engaged, make sure we're ready to go. Okay? Now, big question, what can I do? As a staff member, as a student, what can I do? First of all, understanding those three brain states and identifying them. All right, that might be going up to one of your friends. Hey, I'm seeing you're having a really rough day. All right, all right, it looks like you're in the survival state right now. How can I help you? How can I get you to the emotional? And then we can get you to the executive. All right, your teachers might come in and say, listen, I, I'm in the emotional state right now. I had this happen last night, whatever it may be. I need you guys to be patient with me today. I need you to understand that. I think after you identify and you understand them, communicating that's very important. Advisory every morning. Your teacher's communicating with you. Something happens at lunch. We always have our lunch time super supervisors here, right? Hey, something just happened. I'm not doing very well right now. I need a little help, a little support. I need a little time out. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Meditation. And sometimes you guys think of, right? But when you meditate, it's also just having a quiet moment to yourself. Clearing your mind. Letting whatever is bothering you, let it go, right? Our champion uh, theme this month is, month is flipping the switch. Letting that go, flipping the switch so you can get back to the executive state to learn. And then lastly, using our support system. So I go back to these questions. Advisory. We have advisory because I want you guys to see the same people every morning. I want you to build a bond with those people. If she's not doing very well today, hopefully, me being her advisory, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna check on you later to make sure you're okay. Okay, we have advisories to create a family here at Lake Ridge. That's what we try to do. That's our goal with advisories. Champion level indicators, how many of you guys do those? Raise your hand. Champion level indicators in advisory. Should be everybody. Oh, we do it. One to five, right? Uh -huh. yeah, totally. All right, hands down. Now, now, 
It's important that you guys are being honest with that. If you're having a good day, you're a four or five, fantastic. If you're having a rough day, you're at a one or a two. Even when you come into the gym here in the morning, I've got a couple for you. Just today, we had a student come up to me. Hey, I'm in a one. I'm in a one, I, I need some support. Thank you for telling us. We'll take you, we'll, we'll take care of you, we'll go help you out over here so we can get you back to class and you're ready to learn. Okay? Make sure you're honest with those and let your family help you talk why you're in a one, if you can. Family breakfast. I'm a big believer in having dinner with my family. <laughs> Closest thing I can provide you with that is breakfast with your family, with your advisory. I think it's important. I think it's important you guys sit down and you eat together and you talk about last night, what happened. It's very tragic that Kobe Bryant died, died the other night, right? Did you have a conversation about that in the morning? Okay, again, that's what that advisory is for. Some students walk the hallways, all right? Teachers, and here's what happens. I'll give you these, this one's got these. You did this one last time, thank you. What happens, your teachers let you walk the hallway, right? Mr. Smith, Ms. McKnight and I, your teachers, what are you doing in the hallway? Get back to class, right? That, that's what you guys get. This passes for a lap around the hallway to take a deep breath, to clear your mind. Now, when I see you with this pass, my thinking changes. It goes from get back in class to how can I help you? Let's walk, let me walk with you. Tell me a story, what's going on? Okay, this allows you to feel safe in the building, that you know that you can take a lap. On the back, as you, if you guys get this, when you get this, it says a couple things. Walk away and let it go. When you're thinking about why you're taking this lap, tell them to stop. Go to another activity. My favorite, rock, paper, scissors, that's the best way to resolve conflict. It's my ball, no, it's your ball, rock, paper, scissors. Um, use an I message. I feel like such and such and such, okay? Apologize, talk it out. That goes back to that communication piece. Ignore it, or wait to cool off. So when you get this, you've got some strategies on the back side of this. Every one of your teachers will have this. Sometimes your teacher may come up to you and say, I need you to take a walk, all right? I'm, I'm frustrated with you, I'm down in the survival state, take a walk and we'll regroup here in a second. Or sometimes you as a student may be, I need to take a walk. I'm frustrated, I'm down in the survival state, can I go real quick? Here you go. Thumbs up, thumbs down, we get it. Thumbs up, everybody gets it? All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, palm corners. So, some of your classrooms have palm corners. Some of your exploring teachers have palm corners. Um, what I want you guys to know about this is ISL has a palm corner also. It's not just a place to go because you haven't done what you're supposed to be doing. You're not being a champion. There's also a calm corner in ISL for you to regroup your mind. All right, you need to use that. That pass is for like, hey, I just need to take a walk and take a break. If something major happens, all right, where you're gonna need a half hour, an hour, a day sometimes, that's what that is for. All right, so I want you guys to understand that there is a calm corner in ISL. It's important that we use it. This word support, I mentioned earlier, we, we get some pushback with that word. We're here for you guys, we're here to help you. Okay, but you guys have to want the support for it to work. Okay, we have a whole list of items that we do with support, going from advisory every day, <coughs> down to a mentor, down to a school job, down to the counselor, down to, uh, we have a whole list of stuff. We will walk you through these steps as you need, but you have to be open to that word support. MTSS, multi-tiered support system. Okay, uh, in your advisory class, we have that sheet of paper that we go through with your attendance, your grades, your tardies, uh, everything else. There's a couple of your um, NWA scores. That's like an overall school grade, so to speak, of how you're doing. Okay, your advisory teachers will be going over that with you. Hey, you're doing really good. We got 
A's and B's here, we've only missed one day of school, or you got 25 tardies, you've been absent for 40 days, and you have all F's. What can we do to help you? All right, that's the purpose of that. Who wants to read this? You gotta be loud. Stand up and read it. Yep, you want to? Go ahead. No? Somebody else? Go ahead, stand up and read it. Every experience you have with a person creates an emotion. Very good. Every experience you have creates emotion. Now, back in the adults' day, those experiences were face to face. We saw you, you read my body language, you heard the words coming out of my mouth. In your world, social media is an experience. You post something on social media, you call somebody out on social media, you need to leave a negative impact on them, that's an experience. Okay, we use this word trauma, right? Trauma revolves around emotion. If you had an experience, I, I use the example of, of water. Say when you're a kid, right, um, you almost drowned in a swimming pool, right? Are you ever gonna wanna go swimming it? Yet? No. I don't know, but that could be a traumatic event because of the emotion surrounding it. All right, that's what happens with the emotion. Okay, make sure you leave a positive experience with everyone you come across. That will create a positive environment at our school. We've got two more slides and we're done. Who wants to read this one? All right, be loud. You want to take a stab? That's a tough one to think about. A lot of thinking. You want to take a stab in the dark of what you think it might, might mean? Yeah. It's a tough one. Here, here's what it means. If you're thinking, that's not what I wanted to do. If you're thinking, I hate coming to school. I can't stand being here. I don't like nobody. It's going to create what type of environment? <laughs> Bad, a negative one, right? That's, that is your thinking that creates a negative environment. What I need you guys to do have a very positive environment. Our culture right now is very good. Our discipline is down. Our write-ups are down. All right? We're doing a very nice job. We have a positive environment. Is it that way all the time? No. It's not. And I think that's unrealistic to say that it will be positive 100% of the time. But we have things in place to support you and help you to create a positive environment. It's your thinking that needs to change. You have to think every day you come here, I'm gonna learn something. You have to be ready to learn. You have to be in that executive state. And if you're not, if you're in the survival emotional state, how can we, advisory, your teachers, administration, how can we help you, your friends, get you up to the executive state so you're ready to learn? Okay? Last one. This is the important one. Go ahead, read it. You want to go? Stand up. It is our job to keep safe. Is it your job to keep your teacher away? Yes, it's both. It is our job to keep you safe. It is your job to keep it that way. You want to explain it to me? Can I read the next one? I don't have the next one. <laughs> <laughs> what that means is this: we have all of these layers to keep you safe. Safety is my number one priority for you guys. You have to feel safe when you come to school. No if, ands, or buts. Okay? You have to feel safe. But I need your help to keep it that way. You guys know on social media what's going on before I do. I don't have, I'm not friends with you guys on social media. I don't know what's going on. You guys hear stuff that's going on. You hear about a fight before it happens. Are you going to be the one to come tell me? So that I can deal with it and I can get that person from the survival state? That's right where they're at, they're talking about fighting, right? And we can do our layers of support to get them back to the 
promotional to the executive states. It's our job to keep you safe. It's your job to help keep it that way. Let us support you. Let us help you. All right. What questions do we have? Questions? There's not another slide. I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to the next one. You, you can be one for me. Mr. Farley. I had a student ask earlier exactly how much is the appropriate time for that timeout pass. Um, and that's a valid question. That is a very valid question. Um, so the question is when, when can we use this? Ideally, you don't do it during the direct instruction of the teacher, right? You guys need to be in class when the teacher's given a direct instruction. I would like you to wait till that is done and then use this pass, okay? Understand you gotta get your, your work that you missed, you gotta make it up, right? But if you're just doing one lap, it shouldn't be too bad. Or if you feel this way and you come right in and the teacher's got to do now and they're ready to go, hey, I need you to take one lap, can you give, give me a minute? Go ahead. But when a teacher is doing a direct instruction, that's ideally not the time to use this. Good question, Mr. Byerly. What else, you guys? Got anything? Do we understand the three brain states? Yes. Thumbs up if you understand? Yes. Do we understand what to do with the three brain states? How to identify them? Communicate. All right. Very good. Adults, any questions? Did I miss anything? Adults? Questions for you guys? All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate you coming. I pre appreciate you guys listening and being quiet. All right. Let's have uh, Mr. Byerly's